Hi and welcome to the US Open edition of the preview show. This week we obviously have the second major uh, of the season and it's held at Shinnecock Hills which is a classic uh, US Open venue and this will be the fifth time that Shinnecock has held the US Open and the first since 2004. Um, 2004 was a relatively controversial um, US Open only in so much as the USGA had kind of pushed the limits of the course so much uh, when it came to sort of making the conditions fast and firm that uh, on the Sunday the, the grass on the greens was actually dormant in certain areas. Um, what that meant is that effectively the ball wouldn't hold uh, on the greens and particularly on the par threes the only way that guys were able to stop the ball was go in a bunker and get up and down from there. So it was a little bit of a carnage event. Uh, ultimately the winner was Retief Hooson who um, held off uh, Phil Mickelson's charge uh, by a couple of shots to win there. Uh, on, on Phil I should note and I'll touch on him a bit later he's also played the previous time it was at Shinnecock in 95 when Corey Pavin won and he had top five so he's got history at this course. Um, as an open venue it's relatively short it's been lengthened um, it's just over 7,400 yards so it's almost gained about 500 yards since it was last played in 2004 but it's relatively short certainly in comparison to the last couple of years at Erin Hill and Chambers Bay where they were almost seven, almost 8,000 yards uh, in length but it's a classic US Open track in so much as it's going to put a premium on strength from tee to green Fairways will not be as wide as Aaron Hills. There will be wind. I know Aaron Hills was supposed to have wind last year, but none. It was just the most benign conditions ever. But this is at, you know, it's basically by uh, the coastline, so there will be some wind here. Although looking at the weather beforehand, I don't think it'd be a crazy amount. It'd be up to twenty miles an hour at times, which is not that that challenging for these uh, for these pros uh, for sure. Um, but it will again put a premium on placing the ball off the tee. Um, and the rough will be incredibly penal uh, and they're not going to do what they did last year which is placate the players and chop that down by all accounts and you know, listen to a few podcasts and seeing on social media the USGA is happy with where the rough is at and is not going to do too much to it um, I'll put a disclaimer just in case they do change before uh, the tournament starts later in the week um, in terms of kind of what to expect this week it will be firm and fast conditions um the greens are relatively sloping off and have lots of runoff areas. So unless you hit the ball in the right part of the green, um, you're likely to run off into one of these areas. And so it's going to put a premium not only on approaches into the green, but on your short game around the green. So if you're kind of looking at stats and you want to see about the sorts of players that are going to do well here, I'm going to move the putting to one side. Putting's always a premium at any event. Um, less, you know, even more so in a major and even more so in a US Open. But the sort of events you need to be looking at is, is strengths off, off the tee, so strokes gain tee to green, and then sort of bogey avoidance, getting up and down in and around the green. So those who've got good short game is going to be really important here. Think of kind of your Jason Days, Patrick Reeds of this world, Webb Simpsons, etc. Those are the sorts of types of individuals you need to be keeping an eye on because it's that short game area that, that people are going to either win or gain strokes by avoiding bogeys. US Open is about avoiding bogeys. I think in terms of a score to look out for that will be competitive here this week is anything under par. Um, I think if you have four rounds and, and you finish the tournament at par, um, you're going to be there or thereabouts or certainly not a million miles away. Um, in terms of form going into the event I think what's fascinating about this particular event is you can kind of look at the top 15 20 players in the world and I would expect all of them are in relatively decent form and can contend here um, obviously we had DJ winning last week in Memphis at a canter I mean obviously a fabulous finish to hold his second shot from 160 yards or whatever he did to win by six strokes uh, I will caveat DJ and he's not well he's not my pick to win although I wouldn't be surprised if he did, no one's ever won the preceding event to a US Open and then gone on, on win to, to win the following week. So um, just, just bear that in mind. It's very difficult to, uh, to win back-to-back -back weeks regardless on, on the PGA Tour, let alone one of them being a major. Um, that being said, 
I think the form of the top guys is really interesting. Obviously, JT's in fabulous form. Justin Rose has been just phenomenal for about six to nine months now. Um, I think he's got 12 top 10s in his last 15 events. Um, and then you've got other guys like Brooks Kepka, last year's winner. He's been in some great form recently, a couple of top 10s um, after coming back from a wrist injury. Rory, bit of an enigma. Jordan, bit of an enigma. Um, but outside that, John Rahm's had a good showing recently. Um, I suppose the only one who's a little bit disappointing for me and from my perspective, I'd be intrigued to see how he does this week. He's always done well at US Open, that's Sergio. Um, he's in some pretty crummy form at the minute, um, not really done a great deal. Um, and I think he's always almost out of 50 to 1, I think I saw. I'm just checking now. Yeah, 50 to 1. I mean, that's crazy long odds for someone of his calibre. But in fairness, he's not done anything since he won the Masters last year, aside from winning the Singapore Open. But but granted, that is a relatively weak field, and I would have expected him to win that event regardless. So I think um, the long and short of it is, I do expect one of the big guns to win it this week. Um, and in terms of my prediction for the winner, I'm going with somebody who's been in fabulous form all season. He's won a US Open previously. He is my favourite player anyway to watch. I just enjoy his game. And that's Justin Rose. Um, I know he's a bit of a patriotic pick and I do have a siding towards him. But I think his game is just set up for the US Open, for the mental grind of a tough US Open course. Uh, his odds are, uh, what have I got him at? 16 to 1. So 16 to 1, decent odds. He's fourth favourite here behind DJ, JT and Rory. Um, and he's kind of level with Ricky and, and Jordan at that. But I think that's pretty decent odds. And certainly I do expect him to be contending regardless. Tee to green, he's just so solid. On the green, he can be a bit hit and miss, but he has found something recently. Obviously won a couple of weeks ago and he was in the mix to win the following week. If he had won that, he would have gone to world number one. So he is in some fabulous form. Um, so J Justin Rose is my pick to win this week. Um, each way is interesting. There are a number of different areas, different routes I could have gone here. I'm going to give you a couple of different names. I think one person to keep under your radar, well, there are two that are really standing out for me that you should keep under your radar. In fact, I've said two. Scrap that, three. Three names you need to be aware of this week. First one, Hideki Matsuyama likes the US Open. A um, couple of top tens in the last couple of years starting to come back into a bit of form. He's at 33 to 1. That's the longest odds we've seen Hideki at for quite some time. Now, granted, he's not as strong a favourite as the others and his form's not been as good as the others. But given his pedigree, and he always does well in, in the majors, he's a bit like two of these other two guys that I am going to reference right now. The, the other one, Brandon Grace, 35 to 1, was very close to winning at Chambers Bay. He's done very well in the Open over recent years. Always seems to turn up at the major events and he likes a tough course. He's another grinder. If if the course is playing really low under par, I wouldn't go for Brandon Grace. But for this type of course, he likes it in the wind. Uh, when, it, when it comes down to grinding out, um, out scores, again, he's somebody that I do really rate. And the final guy that um, from an each way perspective is Mark Leishman. Fast and firm is Mark Leishman's pedigree. He, he's, he was brought up in um, uh, the links and the fast and firm conditions down in South Australia around Melbourne. And, and look to those types of guys. Look to the Australians potentially for decent sort of value bets, kind of Adam Scotts, etc. of this world. And in fact, potentially Jason Day. I didn't mention him at the beginning. And I'll just touch on it. The reason why I'm not mentioning Jason Day is a winner. His short game's phenomenal. His approach to green, though, is not strong enough for me. I think he's a bit too wayward at the minute with his irons and off the tee. His short game is unparalleled, absolutely unparalleled. His putting is the best in the world. But, but I just think he's too wayward off the tee, and you just can't be that wayward at, uh, at this event. Um, so, yeah, th those are my kind of three each way bets that you kind of need to be aware of. Um, as really decent, really decent prospects. I expect them to be there or thereabouts. In terms of outsiders, there's so many different ways I could have gone here. I mean, from a nostalgic perspective, you could look at someone like a Martin Kime, who's obviously again got two, 
two US Opens beforehand and smashed the field at Pinehurst by like eight shots or something a few years ago. He was like 10 under par and then there was somebody else at two under and everybody else was well over par. And 150 to one. And again, he's showed a bit of form a couple of weeks ago, the Italian Omen, um, Open in the Rolex series. He was there or thereabouts up until the last round. He had an average last round, but still a top eight uh, performance there. And again, he's that sort of grinder, grits it out. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he had a good showing this week. But a couple of names I'm going to give you, a couple of American guys, both of whom have shown really decent form this year, both are great ball strikers. One of them's a better putter than the other. Um, Carl Stanley at 100-1, to one. came very close to winning the other week. Um, he's having another good season this this year. Tee to green is phenomenal, just depends on how the putter is from, from his perspective. But the other guy that I do really like, 151, is Luke List. Uh, he's shown up well at a couple of challenging courses on the PGA Tour this year. Um, in some relatively decent form at the minute, he was just beaten out in a playoff to JT in Florida. Uh, I forget what the event was. It was the week before the Valspar. Um, but anyway, he's in some decent form, someone to be aware of. Uh, and I expect him to do pretty well this week. Again, he's just very strong tee to green, just very strong top five, I think, in, on the PGA Tour in terms of stats there. Um, so those are my couple of outsiders to look out for. But, but I will caveat it. I, I genuinely think it's going to be a big player that wins this event. I would be massively surprised if it isn't. Um, so look out for look out for them moving forward. In terms of from a, another patriotic perspective, or other people to look out for. I know I've obviously gone with Rose as my winner. But again, I expect a decent week from Poulter and Fleetwood. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if either of them contended. You know, Tommy Fleetwood, Tita Green... He's one of the best ball strikers in the world. You know, he's obviously 11th in the world anyway. He's got a little bit cool over the last couple of weeks in terms of his form. But again, he's somebody who can grind it out. So I wouldn't be surprised if he's there or thereabouts. And Poulter's just been in sensational form this year. I think he's had 10 top 25s. I think he's almost nailed on for the Ryder Cup. And I think another strong showing here will just cement his position as at the very worst a captain's pick for, for Bjorn come, uh, come September. So look, there we have it. Fast and firm US Open. Weather looks like it's going to be great the whole time. I think it's going to be sort of sunny conditions, 25 degrees, a little bit of wind out there. I think we'll see a very competitive and hopefully a strong um, Sunday uh, with, with some really big names contending at the top. I do expect it to be under par, the winner. Um, maybe at a max kind of five under par. I don't think it'd be any, any sort of lower than that. I'd be surprised. Um, but all in all, I think we're in for a fabulous condition and, you know, I'm keeping my fingers crossed for Rose that he'll uh, get his second major, his second US Open at another classic venue. And don't forget that he wins at classic venues. Just go and look at the wins he's had, unbelievable venues that he's won at and the tough venues at that. So there you have it. As always, let me know your comments below. We welcome to hear your predictions as well. And uh, yeah, let's see how we, uh, how we get on this weekend. Cheers.